Hello everyone, we're gonna do a little bit of the up the ante today as far as performance and speed demonstration for God of War Ghost of Sparta. I love the entirety of the God of War series. I still have to play the more recent one on PS4, which is along the likes of stuff such as Last of Us 1 and 2, more story driven in nature, but at least I have my Devil May Cry series and Darksiders, etc. for hack and slash. Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparrow were two of the most incredible PSP games, period. And I love when they uh, brought these back into PS3 with upscale graphics and such, and it was just a better fit for the PS3 than it was on PSP. I mean, it was just such more playable. But uh, again, I still have to play the PS4 one. And uh, what hack and slash games do you like? I mean, I love tons and tons of hack and slash games. And I have to say, one of the earliest ones I really, really enjoyed was Golden Axe. I call it hack and slash because I always played as the dwarf. But I also like stuff like Streets of Rage and, of course, Double Dragon, which are great brawlers as well. Uh, again, this is an excruciatingly difficult, frustrating example of a game that's tough to run on a mini classics and uh, just in general. Uh, let's try going up here. Uh, can we climb up here? See if I can remember how to do this. It's been a while since I played this part. There we go. So far, so good. We're going to get to some uh, combat hijinks here. I remember some elements of this game actually being straight out of Rygar as well. And of course, Rygar uh, kind of copied off of the Bionic School, uh, Bionic uh, Commando School with the grappling hook and such. Okay? Should have some enemies to fight here. I'm ready! So far, so good. I mean, again, we're not going to ever run this game perfect, but I'm still happy to be able to run it as well as it is right now. Definitely quite playable, considering. And who would have thunk a few years ago that we could ever run a game like this on Mini Classics? I mean, it used to actually crash, freeze, and burn. Like Burnout Revenge. I mean, it's just literally impossible to run due to the memory leak. But I th have things running way, way better memory allocation-wise now. We're going to get to some more uh, shenanigans up here once we get to the next chamber. Oh, if that guy wants to do that, I'll just do this. I'll do the... <laughs> yeah, take him down that way. Bam. Never fails. This game is incredibly fun as far as level up as well. I mean, I love God of War 1, where you can level up and get all these crazy armaments and power-ups, and God of War 2 even more so because you car carry them over into a new game plus, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm ready. I remember this guy here, uh, if he's the same guy I remember, taking me a few tries because you have to actually play like Tekken and Soul Calibur, be a little bit defensive in nature. But so far, so good. We have more PSP games to test as well, but this is a beast of a guy to take out here. Kind of like a beast like uh, Sasquatch in the commercials. Uh, his name is Daryl, apparently. Okay, here's the Rygar by the Commando style grappling here. See if I can remember how to do this. I've done this so many times over the years. There we go. I don't want to take you on yet, dude. I'm going to defend. Hold the L1. Let him hit me. Three. Of course, we're going to have more enemies uh, to take me on. Okay, I got this. One, two, three. You got to play defense. That should get the little circular uh, attack soon. One, two, three. In some games, like Brian Garfer and Pinnacle, you can actually uh, stand around the corner with your... Uh, this gets weapon. It is so awesome because you can actually hit enemies and they can't hit you back. And we got some enemies my way. I'm going to take them out. And the good thing is I can't really get uh, ganged up on when I'm in these animations, which is kind of cool. In some games, you need to do animations like that. You get ganged up on by enemies. Oh, no. We got to do the LR thing here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. We're going to take out this section here. And again, this game is running pretty damn awesome right now, considering. I mean, it <laughs> probably won't run a whole lot better than this. Okay, let's wait for the defense again. One, two, three. I'm ready. Give me that circle. One. Come on, go ahead. Free hit. I gotta remember if there's a faster way to take this guy down. There we go. Need a guard impact like in Tekken and so oh, should we say Soul Calibur. There we go. I'm taking you down, dude. Oh, yeah. Bam. 
No, 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 no. There we go. Wasn't too bad. I'm sure I could have taken him out a little bit faster, though. Okay. And then we can do this little puzzle here. And there's quite a few puzzles in these games. Not as hard as, uh, mind you, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider puzzles were just absolutely irritating at times. Okay. Uh, I should be able to jump up here. Do that crazier vault jump. Again, very, very pleased with this. And I've played quite a bit of this in the past. And this is probably the best I've ever had this run in. Oh, yeah. But, uh, again, this is absolutely amazing. We're gonna move on to another game now. But, yeah, this is damn cool. A little content star treasure dummy. PSP. There's actually one game that had, uh, issues just like the Hammer and Hero game before. And I have it working now, and I'm very, very happy. It's wor uh, working so great. We're talking about Namco Museum Battle Collection. It is actually running pretty awesome right now. We're gonna do a demonstration of this because, uh, if you've ever played the PlayStation 1 collections, like Namco collections, they actually have some games like Pac-Man, Galaga, etc. But the U.S. versions don't have the rearrangements uh, of the games, but the uh, Japan versions do, which is kind of strange. And I'm talking like some of these games right here, like Pac-Man rearrangement right here. I'm calling it rearrangement, it's really arrangement. But this is actually, there's a game similar to this on the PlayStation 1 Japan version of the Namco Collections. There's even a great uh, Valkyrie one as well, which uh, is absolutely amazing. You have the original Valkyrie on NES on there, Famicom, as well as the arcade one. And then a Redux, which is kind of like uh, a remake, rearrangement like this. Okay, and we have the Pac-Man one. I mean, you can never get enough Pac-Man. I used to love watching the Pac-Man cartoon way, way back as a kid. They had quite a few video game cartoon series way, way back. There was even like uh, one that had like Pitfall and uh, Cooper, etc. For those of you who uh, remember 1982 and such. And then of course when we had the Mario show, we also had uh, shows like, uh, you know, Zelda. And then way, way back we also had Dragon Slayer cartoon series, which I absolutely love. I love anything related to Dragon Slayer. See if I can get this last power pellet here. And again, the cartoon series, I used to love watching it. I remember USA Network having stuff like GoBots, and of course, the Pac-Man cartoon series. But this is Pac-Man here, and you even get little boss battles as you get farther into the game. Now we're going to go, uh, actually to quit here, and do one of the other, uh, arrangements. Uh, I'm not worried about saving right now, but yes, this actually used to have graphical glitches and, uh, be a dark screen, not even loaded at all. I meant to go back, sorry. Let's try this one more time. And I'm sure some of you have done that in the past. Again, I keep jumping back between, uh, of course, Japan and uh, USA games, where they are actually backwards, where I have to put circle to move forward and X to move forward in one. And then circle to move back and X to move back in the other. But we're going to go back to the main menu here. And we're going to go to the Galaga arrangement. Right here. Check this awesomeness out. And the closest thing to this that I'd have to say would probably be Galaga 88, which you start out initially with some normal stages, and then you get through some amazing uh, scrolling sections, kind of like the uh, vertical stages in Lifeworks. It is awesome. But great, great music, and this is quite a playable game. One of the cool tricks is if you actually have one of the insect toys come down and try to grab you, and you have uh, surplus of life, let it take you, and then you can shoot it down and get more power to you. But very, very addictive. It's almost like a euphoric experience there with this great music. Take out the stage right here. Really, really digging this music here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That guy has some uh, hectic patterns there. Between Galaga and Galaxian, I have to say I like Galaga better. I probably got all 46 there. And sometimes when you have the bonus stages, you can actually miss them all and still get a bonus. I'd like to get that one power up though. See if we can have that one come down and uh, try sucking me up here. Then I gotta get him again. And yes, you play a few stages and you'll get a boss battle. But yes, we got God of War and Galaga, two ends of the spectrum here. I forgot I can actually just hold the button down and do turbo as well. It actually has a uh, auto rate on turbo already activated here. Come on, come and suck me up. There we go. There we go. Now I just have to make sure I shoot him back and then I'll get more power. And it varies in the game. There we go. There we go. Now I get my ship back. There we go. Now I got double firepower here. Sometimes you get double ships. And uh, it's absolutely awesome. In Galaga 88 for TurboGrafx-16, you can actually choose to start with the double firepower to begin with. 
But this is so damn awesome. If you play far enough, you actually get a boss battle. I'm trying to think of what other kind of PSP games I'd like to test here. I mean, I have a few more I can test. But, uh, this is awesome here. The enemies are definitely going out a lot quicker here. But play a few stages and you get a nice boss battle. Now we can actually move into another game, uh, for PSP. Let's see what else we have that's uh, a little bit of a stubborn game. Uh, one person said that he actually likes Split Second. I had this run definitely considerably better than before, but there are still a few, uh, hitches in the game, which I'm hoping I can clean up in the future. Here you go, read a performance and speed demonstration of Split Second, an incredibly awesome game on PSP, PS3, as well as Xbox 360. With its brother and stuntman, they have incredibly, invariably cool gimmicks that really separate them from the crowd. And uh, let's talk about the Disney Interactive Studios here. Uh, the gimmick in this game is kind of ironic and coincidental because it harkens back to the awesomeness of the insanely crazy awesome movies, Final Destination series. Uh, Tony Todd for the win all around. Love those movies. And Tony Todd is also great in the Hatchet movies. Uh, and the Hatchet movies, if you don't know what they are they're basically think of a dark comedy look at movies such as friday the 13th they're absolutely insane and there are three of them all worth watching uh definitely check out hatchet one two three check out the trailer and if you like stuff like tremors also check out uh the movie called feast which also has a trilogy so hatchet trilogy and feast trilogy love my obscure horror movies let's check this out here this gameplay kind of reminds me of the awesomeness of like a movie to game adaptation such as the great reboot remake Death Race movie with Jason Statham here. And I picked the Drifted Vehicle. There are actually two other vehicles as well, but the Drifted Vehicle gives me the ability to earn the unlocked potential of taking out uh, enemies and opponents with these crazy Final Destination style traps, which are called Power Plays here. You see what I'm talking about. But there are also vehicles that have acceleration, as well as this uh, vehicle which has uh, tank power where it can't crash as easily. But I can ride right behind a vehicle, and here's one hitch. The tutorial prompts still slow down the game, considerably, but once you see them, you don't see them again. Like in God of War and the Multitude and Plethora of other games, where once you see the tutorials, they're done. But I can ride right behind the vehicles, like a semi in real life, and build up my little meter here by drafting. And if I go around the corner, uh, tap a little bit of a square, I can do drifted as well. And uh, you kind of mix them together, and you get enough of them, you can do these interesting Final Destination style power plays. But yes, do a little bit of drafting here. Drafting. A little bit of, uh... There we go. I wrecked that dude. And this is so awesome here, I mean... <laughs> and I'm hoping, like, in uh, future updates, I might be able to get the uh, some of the hitches uh, built up a little bit more. Here's a power plate, just on the bridge there. Look at that awesomeness! That's so damn cool! You gotta watch out, because you can take yourself out as well. And uh, there's also sometimes we need to do power plays, depending on how the game is uh, at that precise moment. You might actually slow down the game for a split second as well. No pun intended. But it's running damn awesome here, and uh, we did a great power play. And uh, this is so damn cool. Hope you're happy, Reed. Oh no, and it's not as forgiving as games like Burnout Revenge, where you can literally ride the walls, uh, ride the rails, so to speak. Okay, I really need to play that next uh, Tony Hawk game when it comes out. That's going to be so cool. I'm going to do another little bit of power play here. There we go. I didn't do that power play. That was somebody else's power play. There we go. Let's do another one here. Uh, let me get up to these opponents to do a power play. There we go. Power play! Oh, yeah. Let's avoid the people. Oh, I wrecked myself. Wrecked myself before I check myself. You got to check your position on the screen. Make sure you're not in the way of the opponents. Oh, no. Oh, jeez, I got taken out by a power play. But I don't mind instant replays. I'm thinking I could uh, probably get that uh, little hitch there with the tutorials and some of the power plays to be a little bit smoother in transition in a follow-up update. Maybe even this next update. But so far, so good. Let's try to draft a little bit and do another power play. Draft, draft, draft. Draft to draft, draft. And try this in real life behind a semi on a freeway. It actually works quite well as far as, like, gas mileage uh, consumption. It actually reduces your gas mileage. There we go. Drafting, drafting. Oh, yeah, let's get this up and do another power play. Oh, there we go, power play. Let's try not wiping out this time. Oh, yeah, we made it on skate that time. Hell, yeah. Oh, that's an awesome, awesome game. We're going to try another game. Oh, no, no, no. I almost got taken up by that one. Uh, we're going to try another game now, but again, uh, I need to try to fix up those little minor hitches there. But let's see what other kind of games we have to try out here. I'm a big shmup fan. This is a little bit of a gem of a game. Uh, we're going to look at it right now. It should be on my list. Uh, Star Soldier. And this is a little bit different than the Star Soldier you might be accustomed to from TurboGrafx-16, which is uh, Shmup Haven. But check out this awesome, awesome game here. 
And this is one hell of a Koshima putts in for the win here. And uh, the original Star Soldier games on TurboGrafx-16 were untouchable. This is actually a reboot remake of it. And you can play, uh, you can actually rotate it if you want to. But I kind of like the gimmick of being able to go like a side angle here. Almost like a cocktail mode. And it has really cool, like uh, almost polygonal 3D style pseudo graphics here. Kind of reminds me of like a really, really well done Desimon game. And there's also a Star Soldier game on Nintendo 64. As well as uh, TurboGrafx-16, these are all fun games. I mean, definitely check out the Nintendo 64 one as well. But we're going to try to get to the boss battle here. And, uh... Desmond was actually a cool game, which has some fan-made content where you can actually make your own games. And it kind of reminds me of, like, some of the earlier stuff on NetEroot for PlayStation 1. One of my uh, very first experiences was making games. And again, it is a pretty uh, frustrating experience because you literally can spend hours and hours of time developing the game to only get a few minutes of gameplay, particularly with the crazy Choose Your Own Adventure style format of stuff like RPG. Let's, let's try to get to the first uh, boss battle mode at three here. And see if we have time to do at least one more game. Oh, jeez. I love these graphics. They're so, like, cool pseudo 3D style here. Oh, look at this. A little bit of a bullet hell style here. Well, not quite, but uh, maybe I'll play in a higher difficulty next time. I'm used to Ikaruga and Radiant Silver Gun, which are uh, invariably more difficult than a, than a standard difficulty here. Oh, yeah, we got this guy. Love my Darius games as well. So far, so good. Really, really cool music, though. Again, try out Star Soldiers, all of the games on, of course, Super Graphics 16. Try out the one on Nintendo 64, and definitely try out this one on PSP. If you want to play this at a different angle, you can actually rotate it in retro video settings, aspect ratio, 90 degrees. But I'm fine with this angle. I love this uh, cocktail style angle here. And uh, I remember last time I demonstrated this, uh, uh, like, personally, I didn't actually have it in a video, but look at the way, way background there. Look at that little, uh, uh, it looks like almost like Crystalis. It has, like, Space Godzilla in it in the background there before he comes to the Earth and starts devastated Tokyo, but he's actually going to start moving there, almost like foreshadow, like in Darius. My boss battle mode activate is actually in the background there, but he'll be in the foreground here very, very soon. But check this awesome it's out here. It'd be kind of cool if we could do this, like, uh, with uh, some of the games like the Guardian Heroes, we could actually jump between the backgrounds. Okay, bullet hell, uh, shut this. Oh, jeez! I got taken out instantly there. Let's try doing this boss battle here. Oh, jeez. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, B-A-O! We got this. Okay, it's like just frenetic up and down here. Oh no! Oh no! I'm expecting uh, Space Godzilla to come out of this dude. Space Godzilla is actually a fun movie. Love this cool music here. Oh yeah, such a really, really cool gem of a game. This actually was on the PlayStation Network, much like the uh, space queue for two dollars. Come on, go down, dude. Oh yeah, we got it. <laughs> awesome, awesome game there. Uh, let's see if we have time for one more game. Where's Space Godzilla at? Damn it. Well, that's the first stage of the game. Let's try one more game here. Uh, <laughs> Star Soldier for the win here. Let's see if we can find one more PSP game here. Uh, one more tough, tough to run game. Uh, what do we want to do? Uh, we're going to do one of the toughest run uh, games there. We're going to do Ratchet and Clank as our final game. Again, Ratchet and Clank for the win. This and Daxter are definitive examples of two awesome games on PSP in relation to PS2, much like Need for Speed Most Wanted, Little Big Planet, and Call of Duty for the Vita versus the PS3. Ratchet and Clank Size Matter, tremendously awesome game, impeccable production values. But, nonetheless, it didn't run all too well uh, last time I tested this, but I have it on my real PSP, so uh, still fun to play, nonetheless. <laughs> Let's check this out. And, uh, we got a little bit of an animated sequence here. It kind of reminds me of like this Sony animated Ratchet and Clank movie, which is in theaters a couple of uh, years ago. It was actually a pretty cool movie, great visuals, great sound design, and actually uh, was a technical achievement as far as anime movies are concerned. But let's check out uh, Mortal Kombat. Scorpion's Revenge as well, which is also a really, really cool movie, and crazy violent. Uh, low L and R controls my camera here. We can do this thing to actually upgrade there. Gadgets, uh, triangle to apt activate. We can get a concussion gun. I don't have any boats yet, but we can come back here once we get our boats. Let's try getting some boats by fighting the enemies here. Uh, let's actually up the ante here. Check this out. 
I can hold down the triangle button if I remember to do the will. Like in Red Dead Redemption here, I'm gonna switch over to my Lacerator. We got Raggedy Ann, aka Child's Play, going on here. What the hell is going on? Okay. Now we're gonna actually do some blasting here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Run pretty damn awesome compared to before. See if I can get used to the controls. I remember the controls being a little bit tricky to get used to in some of the jumping portions. We don't want to go through all my ammo though. I need to save some of it for other parts. Okay, what do I have to do here? L and R at the same time they crouch and uh, X will crouch and do a high jump. So I'm going to line with the wall, hold down L and R. There we go. Now we're going to take it out Scarecrows from Wizard of Oz here. <laughs> okay. More Scarecrows. <laughs> Really, really cool game, having a joyous time playing this. Let me know what your favorite Red Shade and Clank is. I think I like the full uh, armor assault the most out of all the ones I've played. It's kind of cool. It feels like intuitive because the way I'm doing the uh, actual angle of the analog is where it is on my uh, screen. That's cool. Okay. Oh, uh, I remember this part being difficult. I'm probably going to end up getting screwed here. We have to hold L and R and X to do a long jump. Oh, great. Jeff Ward's Gemini here. I messed up so bad there. Okay, let's try this again. I've done it so many times in games like Tomb Raider. I used to love doing the swan dives in those games. There we go. Oh, that's not so easy to do. I remember the first time I tried doing that. It took me a few minutes to do it. Let's make sure we have our weapon selected. Okay. Okay, we're selected. Select button. Oh yeah, so far so good. Find a dandy. Oh no. Oh yeah. I love getting a triple spread weapon. That is so awesome too. Oh, this never gets old. Of course, I can just like farm uh, for both and go back to the beginning and upgrade. I already figured it out. Acid bomb glove. Uh, let's try that. Is that that must be the acid bomb glove? Okay. Oh, that is so cool. Oh hell yeah, that is very very damn cool. Love the uh, shared capacity of the amazing weapons in this game. Let's go back to our blaster here. Whoa, I didn't expect that. It's been a while since I played.